there are many job opportunities in the market, but you are not only interested in the one that can provide you an income, but also the one that's related to your background and experience. This short video is going to show you some strategies that you can follow to be able to get your dream job in any organization you want. Hello, hi, my name is Roger Peden, Director of Employer Services at Jobs for Youth, and today we're going to talk about how do you get a job? Just think about it. Everyone has their target. Everyone has their market that they're really trying to go after. And you have to know what your motivation is. What's your long-term goal? Think as if you have uh, secured whatever licenses, whatever certifications that you already have or already would uh, decide to go for, and what type of job would you want to go? For instance, if a person is interested in being, say, uh, a nurse in the future, think as if you already have your RN license and you are really looking for the job for a job in, uh, say, a hospital. Your your short-term goal would be maybe as a CNA, maybe as a patient care technician, maybe actually in the dietary department in a uh, in a hospital. I mean, because all of those things are transferable in a way. There, you're able to start at the ground level in the healthcare field. Use that experience to go all the way up to your RN, um, your RN position that you're going for. And so how do you do that? Now, think about it. You really want to start off at the patient care technician level, of which you don't know what the entry requirements are. So you do your online research. Your online research could be um, actually, you could just do a Google search about patient care technicians. You'll be surprised at what comes up. Um, when you do the Google search, maybe some different hospitals will come up. And so when you look at a uh, company, it's like say use Mercy Hospital. Mercy Hospital as an example. Uh, you'll click on that, that first link for Mercy Hospital. You'll go into the website and you'll get a whole lot of information. You will learn a whole lot about what uh, Mercy Hospital sees uh, as their culture, what they really uh, see themselves as being proud of. Uh, they may pride themselves on customer service. You will see a lot of different language that has been uh, repeated over and over again through the website because that's something that they want to be branded about. And then you go into the job search. You will see a lot of uh, different languages or a lot of different words that will indicate employment or you'll be able to look at um, uh, particular jobs. Sometimes they will say search for jobs. Sometimes you will see employment. Sometimes you will see careers. Sometimes you will just see jobs. And so you go in to see uh, what type of positions you would, uh, uh, you would be most interested in. Particularly we're still talking about patient care technicians. And so you will see one of those uh, jobs uh, on the website and you go in and you see what they are requiring. You will see some different languages. You will see that they may require uh, CPR cards. They may require uh, first aid cards. They may require some years of experience. So you look at those things to see uh, if that is something that you want to do. Now here is another way to do some online research. You use some uh, what is called met meta searches like indeed.com. Uh, some people use CareerBuilder, some use uh, Monster.com, and some use like pro uh, professional industry type of uh, websites like AHIMA, which is the American Health Information Management Association, uh, to learn more about uh, patient care technicians as well as other um, uh, administrative health care careers. And then once you get a good understanding of what you are looking for, uh, you have to look in your own network. Everyone has, how can I say, uh, they really underestimate how strong their internal networks are. Your mother, sister, father, husband, wife, sisters and brothers. I mean, everyone knows a lot. Everyone knows a lot of people. I mean, you have to just simply ask. And don't be ashamed to uh, let people know that you are interested in looking for a job. Uh, you have to make that plan. I know some people may be a little prideful, but that's okay. Remember that your end result is that you do want to be that RN in the future. You do want to be, you want to be in the healthcare field. And so use your friends and family to start off. Ask them, uh, do you know anybody that's hiring in, in the hospital? 
do you know anybody that's hiring in the healthcare field? I want to work with patients. How can I get inside of those? Especially if you look, if you know some people that already work in hospitals, that is a good, very good insight into that company as well as how to get into it. Now, not just your friends and family. Look at your school. Your school, meaning uh, if you just graduated from high school, remember, your teachers, administrators, principals, friends, they all are a part of your network. And some of them are already working. Some of them may have parents or friends that are in the hospital or in the healthcare field that you can use their insight in order to get yourself into the healthcare field. Now, like I said, people really underestimate the power of their own network. And think about different organizations. I talked about the AHIMA, American Health Information Management Association. That's if uh, you are interested in being maybe a builder or a coder or something like that. But the thing about it is that once you get involved with these professional level organizations, that's a network. That is a very strong network, especially if you are interested in that field. Because people know a lot of the little nuances that, that other people who are not interested in that area would know about. They would know who is laying off before the world knows. They know who is hiring before the world will ever know because they know those nuances because they are actually in them. Now here's a new one, new part of your network that some people really don't even think about. Uh, Facebook. Facebook is a wild animal. I mean, I know some people use it primarily as a social tool, but personally, I use it definitely as a business and a network tool because you never know who knows who. I mean, because currently I have somewhere in the neighborhood of 800 friends. No, not really, but <laughs> nonetheless, I still have 800 or so uh, connections that uh, I can use. Uh, and I branded myself as being like the super um, youth development guy or the super artist guy because I'm an artist. Um, you could ask people in your network if they know of people in the hospital that are hiring or people who indicate in their status reports something about the hospital to indicate that they know a little more about that field. And not just Facebook. Here's another one that people really sleep on. Indeed, no, not indeed. Um, LinkedIn. LinkedIn.com, uh, where it's a very similar to a Facebook, but it's on a whole different level. It's all about your professional network. It's all about people helping people, getting them to where they want to go. Um, it's matter of fact, LinkedIn is a uh, is a great uh, tool just simply because people list their resumes on there. They call them profiles, but nonetheless, they uh, are marketed as resumes. You're able to see what type of tracks people have uh, taken. Uh, particularly if you are interested in being in the healthcare field. And like I said, I'm using that as an example. Uh, you're able to see where they started out. What, what was their first, second, and third level promotions? And matter of fact, sometimes you can even ask them direct questions. Um, it may not be good to ask them a question directly about the job, but you can ask them more about their, their interest in the healthcare field or some particular uh, topic. Uh, that would lend a conversation with them. Um, and also, they have several different groups uh, that you can join. Uh, just like in Facebook, you have fan pages. In uh, LinkedIn, you have groups that could deal with your particular area that you really want to deal with. And so that's, that's a good start with your networking. Now, when you apply for different positions, um, be very specific. Be very specific. Just like if you were to speak with somebody over the phone, you don't have a very general conversation. You want to talk about them uh, as being people. Just like with a company, you have to talk about each individual company and make the cover letter, thank you letter, and follow up letter, letters as being very specific to let them know that you've taken some time to uh, be as specific as possible in order to um, woo that person or woo that organization to know that you really want to get into their company. I mean, and it's all about follow-up. Follow-up is um, actually is the lifeline of your job search. It really is. And how you follow-up is by journaling. Now, uh, I use, uh, I have people to use um, tablets 
on dates or calendars. Uh, so they would know what type of actions they've taken each and every day. And so after three to five uh, business days, you could repeat or go back over those applications that you've, uh, you've assigned or you have um, applied for to make sure that they know that you are specifically interested in that, in that position or in that company. And that's something that you have to constantly do. Now, in, I know it may be difficult. I know it may be challenging, I know it may be something that you can easily give up on, but you cannot give up on yourself. You really cannot give up on yourself. Think about what your long-term goal is, that's one thing. If you really want to be a nurse, think about that's your main focus. And how do you get there would be through all of those different specific steps. Uh, and also, with the, with the journal, the journal will help you stay on task. If you know in your journal that you haven't started your job search uh, in some days or you haven't continued your job search in some days, that is a prompter for you to stay, uh, stay active and stay involved. Now, my personal uh, ratio for job searches would be 13 uh, applications to every, uh, every internship or every interview, meaning uh, if you put in 13 different applications, expect to at least get one interview. Uh, if that's not happening, maybe that's, uh, you might have to go back in your resume or go back in your cover letter to make sure that it's much more customized to that particular employer or those particular employers. So that's about it. I wanted to make sure that you have a good understanding on how to get a job. Um, if you have any other questions, give us a call. As you can see, there are many strategies that can help you in finding your dream job. Don't just settle down for a job that you don't like just to pay your bills. You should work hard on finding a job that can add value to you and allow you to express yourself. You can get your dream job if you put some extra effort and take the extra step during your job search. This is Yad Thank you for watching.